So what does it all mean? We're joined now by the European Union's ambassador to the United States, Joao Valle de Almeida, and Scheherazade Rehman, director of the European Union Research Center, excuse me, and professor of international finance at George Washington University. And welcome back to both of you. Thank you. Mr. Thank ambassador, you. here we are again. A new announcement, a new deal. What does this one mean? Does it signal an end, a beginning of, of an end to the, the troubles of Greece and Europe? I think these are good news in the sense that we're trying to address a very complex, difficult situation in Greece. We're trying to prevent contagion uh, to other countries in the euro area, and we're trying to build the conditions for sustainable go growth in Greece. This is what we're talking about here, dealing with an urgent situation, an emergent situation, but looking ahead to longer-term solutions for uh, Greece's, Greece's competitiveness, capacity to have sustainable growth in the future. Sherazad Rehman uh, still doubts, though. I mean, we heard in that piece, you hear it all over the place, still doubts about whether Greece can grow out of this, their ability to stick to the deal, etc. What do you see? I, I, I think those doubts are very, very real. And it shows up in the plan in terms of having the Troika, which is the IMF, the European Central Bank, and the European Commission representatives on the ground overseeing this new bailout package. I think there is um, enormous distress and mistrust about what's going to happen down the road and if the Greeks are going to stick with the plan. There's an election coming in April, and we don't know uh, what the new government is going to do. There's enormous pain on the ground at this point. There, there's a, this is a sort of extraordinary, um, um, I guess, uh, presence now of the European Union in Greek, in Greek uh, government, in Greek society, a very unusual situation. I think we're talking about a situation in which one needs to uh, find the right uh, balance, in, balance between solidarity and responsibility. Solidarity is what, is what Europe is showing, together with the IMF, towards country in difficulty. Responsibility is what Greece must show, has been showing, I must say, and needs to continue to show uh, in order to ensure the credibility of the measures that we're taking over there. But how were it when you say there's still these doubts? I mean, still doubt about whether Greece will default? I, I think that many, many people, including the markets, believe that Greece will default at some point. And what this 130 billion euro bailout was, was buying time in order to have the Europeans manufacture some kind of a structured default as opposed to a disorderly default. Uh, to some extent, uh, some of the debt has already been written off. And more debt has been now added on to Greece. And at this point, I can't see how they can pay this back, given the fact that growth at this point is non-existent, given the austerity packages. Do, do you think default is still possible? Well, I, I'm not able to predict the future. And I don't think any of us is. We believe that this is the right track for Greece. By the way, I don't see an alternative track for Greece. Uh, let, let me just point out to one point that sometimes I uh, listen in the debate here. For us, there is no opposition between austerity and growth. That's the wrong choice. We need both. We need austerity now in Greece because there is no other alternative to restore credibility to the public finances of Greece, but we need growth. So at the same time, what we're doing in Greece, what the Greeks are doing, is implementing structural reforms. You know, looking at the labor market, at the pension system, opening up the economy, uh, breaking down barriers to competition, all these are the conditions for hopefully sustainable growth in Greece. We don't want uh, bubble, uh, bubbles of growth. We mm. want to create the conditions for Greece to be able to recover its place in the world economy. But, but, is, but is, there some, is there more discussion about whether there has been too much focus on us? I mean, there is more discussion certainly about it. I'm wondering whether in high official circles there is more discussion now about yeah. whether there's too much focus on austerity, making it impossible for these countries to grow. Again, one thing that is not opposed to the other. Austerity is not opposed to growth. And if you look at the last European Union summit in January in, in Brussels, it was all about growth. It was all about creating uh, the path towards sustainable growth in Europe and reforming our economies, reforming labor markets, pension system. All this needs to be done. And it's not only in Europe. All industrialized countries have this kind of problems, I believe, including the United States. What do you think about this austerity versus growth balance? Well, I think on, uh, on, on the topic of Greece having no option, the ambassador is absolutely right. At this stage of the game, they have no option other than to instill these packages to get regain credibility. But I do believe that the austerity package is being put into place again in Greece and in other countries in 2012 will definitely curtail the growth. I, I can't fathom how you can do such severe austerity packages, yet 
yet say that we're going to stimulate growth and create jobs. The only reliance on that is if foreign money comes in. So when they talk about a new firewall, which was a big part of the discussion in Brussels the last couple of days, there's still that's a firewall against the possibility of more countries falling into trouble. Well, the bailout was a firewall to keep Greece solvent right now. But there is a fund, the, 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 the European Stabilization Mechanism, which is in place for almost about a trillion dollars if you add in all the money as a firewall for Italy and Spain. Unfortunately, I don't believe that's enough money if Italy does have some severe problems. I'd like to add to what Sharazad said. She's absolutely right. We are talking about different kinds of firewalls. We need mm -hmm. now to address the more global firewall. And I'm sure our leaders will be able to increase substantially what is foreseen in order to create the critical mass. But let me give you a, a couple of examples of, of more positive ones. Okay. If I take the case of Latvia, one of our member states, that went through a very painful, rigorous uh, program. In 2009, they had a contraction of the economy of 17%. In 2012, last year, they had a growth of 5%. So in a couple of years, they were able through major sacrifice, I, I recognize that, but they were able to restore the credibility of their economy. If you look at Ireland, for mm -hmm. instance, in the last three years, they came from negative growth to a minor but still uh, relevant uh, positive growth in 2011. But to play devil's advocate, in your country, in Portugal, the, the, the growth is, very, is way down. Well, Portugal has started the program last year. They're mm -hmm. doing whatever is Spain, needed. In Spain, the unemployment is, is very high, big problems. I'm not saying, I'm not, not complacent about the difficulties, mm -hmm. and I have enormous respect mm -hmm. for the sacrifices that the populations of these countries mm -hmm. have to go through. But the, there is no alternative to an effort now in order to create conditions for future growth. How long it will take, I cannot predict. I hope it's sooner than later. But these are necessary steps in order to get to that level. Do, do you worry, I'll start with you, Shahrazad, about a kind of a cultural rift that we're seeing in, in Germany, feel, Germans feeling like they're, and Margaret Warner uh, uh, found this in her reporting for us, feeling like they're being asked to pay too much. Uh, Greeks now feeling uh, rather humiliated in some uh, cases about what's being imposed on them. Well, I, you know, I, I think there's some truth to all of this, and, and the ambassador is absolutely right. There is no other alternative other than the structural reforms that have to be put into place. The question is moving forward, uh, and we know the last two years, there have been some mangling of, of how this was all handled. Uh, this is not just a structural reform happening, there's a crisis happening, and there was very little crisis management. And, and what my biggest fear is that they still have not got the tools in place to manage the markets. Uh, it seems to me that the market is a secondary thought, in, 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 at least from the outside, looking at one, some of these policy and these summit measures that do come out that the market needs to be managed in a very clear, precise way so that the anxiety and the confusion and the confidence is rebuilt. But none of that is, is, is taking place in a manner which, which I think would be much more effective. Very brief last week. The last few weeks were encouraging from that point of view. And I agree with you. It's very difficult to manage the market. Neither Europeans nor Americans seem to be able to do that. And maybe that's not the purpose. But if I look at the last few weeks, uh, after we've agreed on a new treaty, after the ECB has provided very ambitious and courageous interventions in the market. Uh, what I see in the, in the stock exchanges, what I see uh, on sovereign debt spreads, okay. points to the right direction. I hope this trend will continue in the All next right. few weeks. Ambassador Joao, Joao Valle de Almeida and Scheherazade Rehman. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.